Hello, in today's video, I'm going to discuss how I installed the plumbing and the hot water heater on my converted trailer. This page is about a man that bought his first pickup truck after he retired. He named it the Galaxy. This truck gave him so much capability that he decided to do more with it. So he bought this horse trailer that he wished to convert into an RV so he could travel around the country and enjoy life in a different way. These are the tales of the Galaxy and the Angel Star. Let's start on the outside. I installed this lockable water inlet valve in the location that I used to have my electrical input until I changed it to another location. So I cut the round hole into a square hole and install it here. That's the best location for it, I do believe. All my new water outlet has a key to it. So it's just gonna clean it up, got it sealed, and it's in. I show you the inside. This is how it looks on the inside, going through the wall. Hopefully I have enough clearance water for the water tank still. This is what it looks like with the fresh water hose attached to it inside. Then I'm going to run up and do my vertical tank. I'm going to use uh, a half an inch PEX B plumbing throughout my install here. These are kind of adapters that I need to use to make connections between my sink and the hoses and other locations as well. Right next to my main command center, I installed this water tank monitor. I figure if you're gonna have the tanks, might as well be able to monitor them. The tank monitor is now installed. Got it plugged up electrically. No tanks hooked up to it yet. I'm, I'm gonna be using that light for the pump. Just showing it that it works. This is where I start my install. Please pardon the hardware mess in the bottom of this cabinet, but uh, I, I started it here beneath the sink and ran it behind the middle cabinet where I would have drawers and then through the cabinetry at the end so I can go out later to move behind the other equipment. I ran the pipes through the wall into the bathroom area where the water pump will reside. Got the pipes run. That's going to underneath the sink, behind this counter, to the back of this counter, and to, into the wall. And it's going back through here, where that water is going to be right there. And it's going to come over here to the water pump. So at least I got those pipes running now. And now I realize I need an, another piece. You're about to witness me doing my first two pet crimps, pex crimps ever. All I got to do is take the end of this tube. And this is the, the crimper that goes on the hose, like such. Put that on the hose. Then you slide, for example, an elbow into this tube. I'm gonna slide it in there, and all we gotta do is move this up to about an eighth inch from the edge and crimp it down. I slid that in, then I slid the, the crimper all the way up to about an eighth of an inch from the edge. Now I take the PEX tool and I'll squeeze those together. So you see that in a minute. But I got my first crimp on and it's on there nice and tight. Now I gotta do the same thing for the cold water side. Rear, my first two crimps. I'll do a couple more elbows leading to the sink. And then I go to the other end. I got these connectors to go from my sink to the hose line. And it's, um, looks like a two piece, but it becomes one piece. All I gotta do is insert this into here. Insert this into the hole, drop it in, and go to your line just like I did that one. Just screw it on. And later on we'll make our PEX connection to here once I put it in there. I'm keeping them off for now because I still gotta work on the drain. Here you can see I cut the PEX pipe the size so I can make that turn towards the water pump and fit, move further along in my installation. 
Look, my first connection from my water pump to the hot water heater. This plumb's going well on that. Moving forward. Now you can see the progress I made installing the pipe to the water pump, hot water heater, and to the sink. And uh, it wasn't hard to do. The piping is very flexible. Most of the stages I did was preparing for my next stage. Now you can see the completed plumbing before I get ready to start working on the water tank connection. On this rectangular water tank, it took me a while to find one where they had the tank and the stand in stock. But when I got it, it was nice to know that this tank was pretty thick and was made to water horses in the trailer. But I took a long time to find a cap for this opening so I can use it in, to make an insert for the water inlet. So I wound up making my own with this brass um, water valve and I cut into the top of the thing as well as installing this drain valve for the water to flow out of it when it fills to the top. I covered my sofa and laid this tank down on it so I can work on the uh, sensors. To install my sensors, I drilled four holes in the side of my tank. It's hard to see because it's a white tank. And I measured by three, not four like I did before, to get the length I should have from the bottom one to the top. And I had a vent I installed. But unfortunately, when this thing rolled over on me, it broke. So either I'm going to have to use the other one I have, or I'll go get a metal one like this, like the water inlet, because that cheap plastic broke on me. I bought this box of seven color wire to help extend those wires to go from the tank further down. Now to install these sensors, I'm going to remove this top nut temporarily so I can insert it into the 3 8 inch hole that I drilled and then tighten it down with this bottom nut. So here I go, I'm going to install the bottom most one. 3 8 inch hole, push it all the way in. There. I'm going to get a 3 8 inch wrench. Put it on there, tighten it. What's going on now is the inside of that thing is expanding to make it a secure, watertight fit. There, yeah, it's all the way down. It concerned me because it seemed like this bushing was pushing out. So I'm going to say that's watertight without over tightening it. I'm going to do the rest the same way. There you have it. All four sensors are in. Don't mind those stray marks I put on there. But those are in. And don't forget to put on your wire retentioner bolt here, uh, back on there. Now I gotta do is wire them up. Each one of these in the kit, I didn't know, but it goes to a tank. I thought one went to a connector, but I was wrong. So this is gonna be the fresh water tank. I'll explain to you how to wire that later. But in the meantime, this white one's gonna go at the bottom and this wire don't, don't supposed to be near a sensor. So I'm just gonna double that back and tape it down that way. Then extend these wires up and down that to get to these other wires. I'm gonna do is splice them in the center and expand them. That way I can use the eyelets that's already attached to the end. This is the way the stand look when I put it back on the stand. You have to make sure you have enough clearance at the bottom that that sensor does not touch the stand. This is how it's gonna look eventually. I haven't run the water from the tank over to the water pump yet, but uh, that's pretty much how it's gonna sit until I get things strapped down, make sure nothing leaks. But it's in. I gotta hook up those the tank sensor and run the wires all the way to the control panel. The holes wound up being a little longer than I expected, so I just doubled it up and put a hook up there to hang the holes keep it from bouncing around. This is the bottom of my tank. I attached the white wire here. I'm gonna splice to yellow to go to the next one. Yellow is that one third, then orange is that two thirds, and green is gonna be full. 
So I'm going to splice those in and you'll see how I did that. Earlier when I was showing you how I did this, the white one does go to the ground. The yellow one is one third. The green one is two thirds and the orange wire is full. What I've done, I've spliced these in and I, I cut this wire, say for the green one. And then I added, found some more green wire. In this case, I'm using 20, um, 20 gauge wire. And I'm gonna attach it to this by these kind of clips right here. And all I gotta do is add these in. One end goes in here like this. Make sure it goes all the way in. Like such. And close the side down. Then I take the other connector. Add it to my existing wire that I cut. Make sure this end goes all the way in. So I put that all the way in and push down on it. There, good connection. Then all I did was take this wire and do the same connection on this end. That's how I do the whole extending the wire deal. This is what it looked like when I finished. So just a matter of me making it nicer. There you have it. It's all hooked up. All I gotta do is pre up the wires a little bit and run the red wire to power and the white wire to ground. And that to take care of that tank sensor. And of course, I'm gonna zip this up a little bit. So everything else looks good. Ready to install. Before we discuss the hot water heater, I'd like to discuss, I was trying to get 240 uh, watts out of this panel and I hooked it up appropriately and had 120 per leg, but for somehow it would not power this 240 volt hot water heater as expected. Wiring the hot water heater seemed simple. It was easy access through this inlet and you had a control panel on the side of that that you could open up the cap to to install the wires. Due to the shape and where the water tank was going to be located, I had to devise a way of strapping it down to keep it from wobbling. The strapping I prepared to hold the water tank in place. You'll see more support in a minute. And also got something to hold some of the weight off the hose. You'll see how that works. Now you can see how I braced and strapped the water tank down as well as supporting the water hose behind it. And you can also see that I ran the supply line from the tank over to the water pump. Now you can see how close the water tank is to the water valve coming in, as well as the vent on top, but it works out just fine. I have no issues with the way this is gonna work. Okay, y'all, I put a little water in the tank. There's no leak at the bottom anywhere. So it'll be the first time you turn it on the water pump. Here it is, fresh water. Sucking it up. Filtration going on. Getting the air out. Uh oh, I got a leak somewhere. Looks like I forgot to connect, tighten up a PEX connection from the cold water right there. I'll fix that, we'll give it another try. Okay, tighten up the connection worked. The leak stopped. Let's see if we get water. Y'all, we got water. It worked. Wonderful. I'm going to go check the hot water heater out and I report back. I just ran the tank up to one third full. Let's go see what the tank monitor says. Look. It indicates it. Good, the sensors are working. No leaks on the sensor so far. Ran it up to two thirds full now. It's just right there. And I'm gonna see what the monitor says. Fresh water tank. Look, 
showing two thirds. Wonderful, the sensors are working great. Almost full. Let me see if it does what I designed it to do. When it gets full, it should run out of this overflow vent. Here it goes to test. Let's see if it does what I want it to do. Yay, there the water comes. It did what I wanted to do. That means it's full. Let's go check it inside. You can see water running out of the overflow vent going outside the vehicle. That's good. I don't know if you can see the water level is all the way up to here. So it's full. Let's go see what our sensors show. Okay, we're at our tank sensor. I'm gonna press the fresh button. Sure enough, it shows full. That's good. So I mean, all the sensors are working and it shows for the correct tank. Nothing else is hooked up. So if you look at the black, gray, or the galley, it just shows E because there's, there's nothing connected to it. What's well, nice, where well, I strapped this down, nice and sturdy. It's not going anywhere. Well, no leaks on that. I have a slight leak coming out of here, so I'm going to have to take that off and redo this um, thread tape on it. Well, other than that, nothing else is leaking. I've got to fix that one PEX connection. This is a look at my progress. Everything seemed to be hooked up and working, except for the hot water heater. Let's turn on power to the hot water heater, see what happens. No power to the hot water heater. Okay, I think I fixed the problem. One more try at the hot water heater. Power here. I heard a beep, it's showing standby, power on, and it's set to 86 degrees. All right, got it working y'all. I'm gonna try the hot water in just a second. In this case, the way I powered this thing up, it appeared to be working, but it would not heat the hot water each time I tried. This is a classically styled and beautiful unit. I really like to get it to work. Okay, there's power to the thing now. Press on, it comes on and show your current setting. It'll flash a minute. Then it'll go back to the current temperature of the water. It's at 6 to 1. But whenever I run the water, it's not heating up right now. I got a E5 with five beeps earlier. The error said low voltage. So more than likely I'm gonna have to change which wire I have connected. I'll try that later. For example, turn on the water. Water pump kicks in. Hot water heater stays in standby. No matter what I tried, I couldn't get out this unit to power up uh, or at power up at when I had to hook it up properly. And then when I hooked it up improperly, it would power up, but still would not heat the water. So I contacted customer support from Air The Real. That's right, it is pronounced air the real. And at first I didn't I thought I wasn't getting a response from them. I was getting frustrated only to find out they had responded to me, but the messages were going to spam. We finally figured out they said I just don't have enough power to run the unit. So I'm about to find an another way of heating the water. Update. I went through a lot uh, with customer search support at Air the Real, uh, dealing with uh, Marge, Nicole, and Laura. They were quite helpful in understanding of my problem. They, even though I was quite far beyond the return window, they sent me a return authorization so I can send that back to them for a refund. It was really great of them. Here's my replacement I found from them. It was made by Thermomate. The old unit was a 14 kilowatt unit and this one's only a three kilowatt unit but it is 120. We'll see how that works out for me. The packing inside is really simple, but it's well protected. And you can just pull the entire unit out, like such. And that's how it's wrapped, completely surrounded by bubble. It looks fairly simple, 
I can do is remove this without wrapping. And there you have it. Look by the side of my hand, you'll see that unit's not that big. And it has the power cord here. So you're gonna need to mount it, what they call, um, upward mount or downward mount. Either way will work. Here's this cap. You pull the cap off. And you'll see that you have a yellow and white, green and black. And these little labels here will show you L for load, N for neutral, E for earth, and uh, L for load. So I have letters there. So it's pretty simple. I'll wire it up later. Okay, here's the replacement heater. It's a thermal mate. I got it mounted to the old location, but it's much smaller. I haven't wired it up yet because I'm waiting, to walk, waiting for a circuit breaker to come in. And I'll let you know. The instructions say to run water through it, make sure there's no leak before you applying power. So I'll do that now. Run the water here. And one, don't see any leaks. So we can't wait to put apply power to it. Just the new hot water heater. Got the water running. Water will feel warmer than the cold water I just put in there. I know. This is saying 84. Highs I had it so far is 86. Well, this is taking a long time. This is not as efficient as the 12 kilowatt one. We'll see what happens later. And as you can see, I pressed the gray water tank. It's showing two thirds full now. So it's, it's pumping in the water and that's good. Correction, the gray tank is showing one third full. It took me a while to figure out where I was gonna put the shower pan. I wanted it closer to the water tank, but that would mean driven through the center beam uh, support underneath the trailer, which I didn't want to mess with. So I resolved to put it here. It takes away from space from the toilet, but it'll work out in the end. Pardon the dirty floor, I haven't had a chance to clean it yet, but this is the setup for the first trip I'm gonna make. I got the shower pan in place, but the shower stall is not up yet. I'll take care of that later. Water working well. Cabinets, I got the finish. There's the couch. Some temporary curtains right there. Those are definitely uh, blackouts. There's the bed. The TV above it. TV microwave. Come around to the countertop. And I have the, uh, the cooktop down there for now. So it's coming along and it's ready to make its first trip next week. Now, one last op check. Right now, it appears to be off, but that's because there's no water running. Turn on the hot water. And we're gonna go back and look. You see it's kicking in, and temperature, it's hard to see with this digital, but right now it's up to 80. The only thing I don't like about this is it's a little slow. I've run the water that long, and it's only up to 84 degrees. So I don't know how fast it'll get up to a higher but it appears to me I would waste a lot of water before it gets really hot. But right now, at least it's working. Op 6 good. No leaks anywhere. I had a leak underneath the sink, but I just fixed it. So we're good. Still 86 degrees, if you can see that. So installing this hot water heater completes the plumbing on the RV. I did complete the um, piping underneath the trailer that runs over into the um, gray tank. So that's all got done and, and bolted down. And I'll show you my shower install on my next video. Thanks for your time and thanks for watching.